Hi, I'm Dante St. James. This morning, we're going to be talking about taking bookings almost anywhere using three particular systems that we're going to test drive, which are Calendly, which is uh, probably one of the ones I've used most extensively in the last few years. Another one called Timely, which is very good for those who are booking time in places like studios or want to have a little bit more information about their guests and their clients as they come into those places. And the final one is called Nova Call Time Sync, which is... Um, one of those ones which has uh, one of a lifetime deal. So you pay for it once, you don't have to pay for it again if you're looking for those extended capabilities to take things like payments and having qualifying questions. What we'll get underway though is with um, a lot of the background on why you'll need things like this, why you'll need different kinds of booking systems and the kinds of businesses that are going to suit these the best before we take a test drive live with some of these systems. So first of all, this is uh, brought to you by Business Station and the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Digital Solutions Program. It's uh, delivered in Western Australia by Business Station, Regional Development Australia, Brisbane in Queensland, and Treaty Business Consulting in the Northern Territory. What we'll cover is why you need these systems for your bookings, what to look for in a booking system. And we're going to take a look at Calendly. Timely and Novo called TimeSync, as I said just a little bit earlier. What we're going to look at is largely these systems and how you can use them and, and what their features are. And as we look live into these systems, you'll get an idea of how we can approach them with your particular kind of business. If you do have questions, if we're going live right now uh, on the live call, you can just put it in the chat window with Zoom or through the Q&A and I'll answer those as we come along them. If you're on YouTube, just whack them in the uh, comments below and I'll come back Back to you as soon as I possibly can with those questions. You will be able to find this again on YouTube later on today via the Business Station channel or via my own one, Dante St. James. So just look for my name and you'll be able to find it. If you've not come across me before, and there's a few uh, unfamiliar names on the call today, uh, you may not know where I'm from. I'm based in Darwin in the Northern Territory, but I work all around Australia with Facebook's uh, community training program, Google's Digital Springboard. <laughs> excuse me, and various other um, government programs such as the Be Connected program, uh, the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Digital Solutions program, and the new business with NICE, new enterprise incentive scheme as well throughout the Northern Territory and North Queensland. So the big question to ask her, right? Yeah, um, Strani just said, uh, I, I got the camera right today. I just had to restart the computer, funnily enough. Yesterday's uh, webinar I had, I couldn't play the camera. So now today I've got it working just fine. And I got the lighting is um, particularly good in here today. Very, very bright, sunny day in Darwin today. So uh, let's get started. Why you would need a system for bookings in the first place. You need something that's going to connect in with your calendar because if you're like me and you're using a Google calendar or an Outlook calendar or even your Apple calendar, the iCal, then you're going to have lots of things on in your life. You've got other bookings, you've got things to do with family, you've got you know the time out that you'd like to have, you've booked in time for things like going shopping, getting your hair done, getting your nails done, picking up the kids from school, the very basic activities of life are all kind of these days in our calendars that are connected to our mobile phones, right? So what you need is something which is going to sync with your availability so that if someone books a, a consultation call of some sort with you, that they're going to make sure that that isn't booking over the top of things you already have, like prior bookings or lunch times or social events that you've booked that you don't really want a client coming in booking over the top of. So you need something that's going to sync your availability with that calendar. Also, having something with some automated reminders can be really, really helpful because you don't want to have to be again going in and sending SMS and text and, and email reminders to everybody just to let them know that, hey, you booked this time. Just want to make sure you know that this time's in there. If you can have something that automates that, that's going to save you a lot of admin time and give you the opportunity to then have them reminded that they're going to be doing this thing with you, but you don't have to do the reminding. The system will do it for you. And ultimately, a booking system is so much smoother than um, backwards and forwards emails such as, um, oh, I'm not available Thursday at 3 p.m., but I do have Friday at 2, 3, and 5 available. And they come back and say, oh, I haven't got those either. What else have you got available? What this is is like one link you can send to someone on an email and say, pick the time that's available that's, and that will sync with my calendar. It's such a smooth client experience. And 
if you can get something which goes into not just your website, not just your email, but also can be posted into social media links. It can be put into the button, like your contact at me or book me button. That's a book us booking book now button. Sorry, through your um through your Facebook page that can make it so much more convenient. So you've got one system to take bookings and inquiries across all your different platforms. I even do this for booking fifteen minute phone calls because honestly, my day is so flat chat these days. Like today, I've got two of these webinars. I've got four client catch-ups to do. And I'm also working on somebody's website today, as well as getting to the doctor who just crossed the road. But I've had to be rebooking for the last three weeks because I haven't been able to get there. Nothing serious, just a checkup. But you would think if I was in an emergency, my calendar won't let me have one. So having a calendar that is very smooth for your clients to be able to use, very effective for you because it syncs with the availability you've already got and has those automatic reminders in place as well is going to make your life so much easier and one of the good things is that there are some solutions out there that will do a lot of this stuff for you for free so let's look at some scenarios let's just say you're a small tour company so you're taking tours um, walking tours through the Cairns central business district in north queensland so let's just say you're doing that what you would want to do is make sure you've got a system which, number one, syncs with your availability. So you say that I've only got um, these walking tours leaving at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 1 p.m., and 2 p.m. So what it allows you to do is block out all the other times and just make it so your availability is as um, 10, 11, 1, and 2 on those particular days of the week that you're going to be available for. You just make those the only available times in your booking system, and then they're the only ones that people can book. What they will then do is check against your calendar to make sure that you actually are available then as well. So for instance, if you've already booked out a group tour that's your maximum capacity at the 10 a.m., it will make that 10 a.m completely unavailable because you've already booked it out manually in your calendar but you still got 11 you still got one and you still got two available so what they will show up is as available in your booking system so someone can go in there and take that booking now wouldn't it be nice if you could also take the payment for that booking as well through a connection with say stripe or paypal something like that can be done. Um, they're not usually a free add-on. They're usually a paid add-on to put that into any of these calendar systems, but the ability to add yourself to the payments is just going to make life so much easier, especially if you don't carry cash on you and you're a small tour operator. You don't want to be having to, you know, fiddle around with change and all that out of your bum bag and all that. You just want to be able to, they turn up, they got their ticket or they, you just check it off on QR code or whatever it is that you're going to use to verify their identity or something like that then you go off on your tour. You're not mucking around with bookings and tickets and payments and square card readers and FPOS machines. You just turn up, they've already paid, it's already done. That can be done with all these systems, um, but in all these systems we're going to look at today, they are, that is a paid add-on, as well as you know the, the regular um, things you need to do with in terms of um, uh, uh, payment processing fees, that kind of thing. So booking consultations is a really important one here because what you might do is have a consultation for one-on-one, -on -one, or you may have a consultation, which is a group scenario. Even with the tours, the same thing. You might have you know, this one time available, but you need it available for lots of different people to be able to book into it and a certain maximum or minimum for that. So Calendly is one of those two tools that does allow that multiple people can book into the same slot up to an absolute maximum. So it allows you for things like booking tours and group sessions group consultations rather than one-to-ones. All these systems very easily handle the one-to-one, -one, but there's only a few of them that actually handle the multiple thing. And that tends to be Calendly. It's very advanced in that respect. And that feature is actually free with, um, with very limited limits that they've got in there that allow you to do that for free. If it's say booking lessons, you might have a music school. So in your music school, you have a guitar teacher, a piano teacher, and a trumpet teacher. So you can have three different calendars linked to three different people and they will then hey, say that the piano teacher has certain availabilities that are full up until Friday and then they've got availability next week. And so that pushes it out. But the, 
sorry, the guitar teacher, bless me, the guitar teacher then would um, then have the similar setup for that. So they may have themselves set up uh, with availability Thursday. So their availability is different to the piano teacher's availability. And you can have even a landing page that contains the different calendars for the different things. And each one of those can take a payment as well. Now there's none of these systems will have quite to the degree, unless you've got like a full studio management, tutoring management system built specifically for that purpose. The systems we're looking at today, they're not gonna have the ability to be able to point each one of those to their own individual calendars or to be able to take payments for those individual people. It'll all go into one bucket of availability and then you'll be able to take it from there. So what you might find is if you've got a studio with three different people involved, you would have three separate accounts so they can have three separate setups with their own calendars. And then you may have a login to all of those as well. But that's a very advanced kind of application of what this is. And there are bigger systems out there that will do that for you as well. Booking visits, for instance, if you're going to book a uh, visit, one of the scenarios would be that you may want to have um, a half an hour break between the different visits, particularly if you drive around town to look for people, you might need half an hour or an hour between appointments. So you can put in a buffer for that kind of thing as well. So these kind of systems we're looking at today are quite ideal for people who are in consultation and advisory roles. So if you're taking, um, you know, one hour consults, 15 minute calls, something like that, I've got various different um, kinds of calls that I'm taking. Babysitters are really good for this because you can take out your availability on specific nights. So you say, I've got a party Saturday night, I take that availability out or block it in my own calendar on my phone through Google or through Outlook or whatever I'm using for my calendar system. And that way, you're able to make sure that nothing can be booked into those times. Coaches, tutors, trainers, a lot of that one-to-one -one stuff, these are ideal for, as well as very small tour operators who are operating in the realm of, I guess, of taking um, you know, either one-to-one -one clients on tours, or they, if they need to, they can go up to um, having uh, something which is a bit more, um, you know, taking multiple bookings into the one slot up to say a total of 12. You can set a maximum of 12 in some of these systems um, before that then runs out, becomes unavailable and then moves on to the next thing. Now for tour operators, there's obviously going to be other kind of um, tourism based systems that are going to integrate with your local tourism offices. So um, an example of that could be something like Fair Harbour or another one called Resdi, which are much better for dealing with tours and, and room bookings and all that kind of thing that you may have for a tourism related business. If not though, you're as a sole trader, just uh, you and yourself and, and your calendar, well then these systems are perfectly made for you. Now, what you actually want to have them all do, and this is an absolute game changer for me when I first discovered these systems, was having the availability to sync in with breaks and buffers and even have multiple attendees in through your Apple, Google or Outlook calendar. Just about all these systems will sync with all three of those. They use the Apple, Google or Outlook calendar systems because all three systems have an open API, which means that they're able to be plugged into in various ways. So you can use an author authentication mode within the booking system that allows it to read what your availability is and then slot a booking into your calendar. Now, is there a problem with spam bookings? I am yet to have any spam bookings going through this so far because I put extra things in there. So it's not just a case of enter your name and your email address and make a booking. It's very much about enter your email address, your name, your phone number, um, answer this quick question, or even in some cases, a qualifying question. In one of my cases I've got on one of my sites, and I'll show you this shortly, um, the, a qualifying question such as, is your business located in Australia or New Zealand? And if it says yes, it continues on with the booking process. If it says no, it redirects to a page that says, sorry, we don't serve your country right now, but we are coming to these countries in the next six to 12 months. So it gives an idea of, um, yeah, if you need to qualify people for that, there is a system that will help you do that. Uh, Calendly at the moment doesn't do that, but one of the um, systems, NovaCall, um, the, the time sync one, that one definitely does do that. So the basics that every one of these systems should do is allow you to sync with your calendar. That's a, that's a bit of a no brainer. Otherwise you won't get the reminders on your phone from your Google calendar or your iCal or whatever it is that you use to remind you that things are coming up or even on your desktop systems where you get reminders flashing up on your screen from Windows or Mac telling you that you've got this appointment coming up. Um, 
you want it to allow reminder email. So it's going to send out a reminder email to either yourself or the other person or both to remind you and they that there is an appointment that they've made. Now that can be set to be 24 hours before or even an hour before something that's going to send out an appropriate reminder. And you want to allow automated rescheduling and cancelling as well. Or you know, if you don't want to allow that, you can turn that off. But in most cases, you want to know if someone needs to reschedule their appointment um, a few days beforehand to next week, you want to know that they don't have to then go through the process of calling you, emailing you, you manually having to adjust things and talking about availability all over again. They can go into their booking email or even to that calendar um, and move it around. And in some of the, most of the cases that I work with, I can actually take the booking myself in my calendar, move it to the new date, and then put in a little note that sends them a note in their email to say, hey, I've moved this to this time. Is that okay with you? And then they can either accept it or deny it, or they can cancel it, whatever they need to do to react to that change that you've made in there. And one thing that's an absolute must have, especially if you've got your own website, is website widgets and booking buttons. You can take a little bit of code, insert it into your site, and people can have ability to be able to book themselves. So they're the real, real basics. Um, some of the add-on extras I'd like to see in a system when I'm using one is qualifying questions. So you can say, you know, I, this came up for me because I've got a um, my DanteStJames.com uh uh, website, just looking for the word there, uh, is, is a .com. So it does open itself up quite often to people wanting to book me from America. Now, I'm not geared towards the time zones of America to be able to do those late overnight calls. And I don't particularly want to um, offer my services to Americans because my expertise isn't in digital marketing or digital systems for American businesses. It's very much geared towards Australian and to a second degree New Zealand based businesses. So I wanted to have a system that allowed me to have these qualifying questions. There's also additional info fields you may want to add in there too, such as you know, want to enter in your ABN, you want to enter in um, you know, your uh, you know, some sort of identifying code or a discount code or something like that. So that when you go to charge them, when they come in, they've got that code in place and you see that in the booking information that comes through. Any sort of additional info fields you want to put in there, such as um, you know, open fields for people to talk, drop downs, multiple choice, radio buttons, check boxes, all that. You would you'd like to be able to put those things in as well as multiple different kinds of appointments. That's important for me because I have um, four different government programs I work with that I take bookings for, for through my Calendly account. So I need four, at least four different things that people can book that's geared specifically towards the length of time that they're booking me for and the information that I need to gather from each one of those as they come in. Likewise, I've got much longer things that I want to book, even little things like 15 minute calls. So I need lots of different options that I can put into things like a, a calendar link or sending it over to someone or linking that particular calendar through to a web page. So that the web page that's talking about having a free ASBAS digital solutions call, that one's booked a certain way with a certain calendar. And then the other one, which is just booking me for a 15 minute consultation. Well, that one then is booked through a completely different calendar, but through the same system and still syncing with my home calendar so that I've got everything going into one big messy calendar and you get something looking like, well, I'll show you soon how messy my calendar looks. But it's, um, people get very scared when they look at my calendar. I had someone tell me once upon a time that they got stressed out when they looked at my calendar. Um, to give you an idea, I'll just uh, quickly share my calendar with you. It's kind of interesting one to see because uh, not everyone really copes well with the kind of messiness that I'm working with. But to be honest, you know, this is what it looks like. It's pretty busy. So you can see there's not much availability in my week this week, next week. Um, what's this week? No, that is next week. This is this week. So I've got nothing really in my day available. Um, I'm actually in Alice Springs tomorrow. So I've got all my details, including flight times, all that kind of thing. So you can see over the coming weeks when my different availabilities are. So that's a, an idea of how you may use your calendar. So what's very important for someone like me who has a busy calendar like that to obviously have it syncing correctly when people do book me through these systems. Otherwise, it'd become one heck of a mess. 
So the first system we're going to look at today is a system called Calendly. Now Calendly is probably one of the world's most popular versions of these systems. If you haven't seen it before, it is a really, really interesting system. So I'm just going to um, pop out of my cal into my Calendly account. I'll just share the wrong screen here for a second. Share over to this one here. I think it's that one. Desktop one, desktop three is the one I'm looking for. There we go. So Calendly is a system that really helps you to schedule. Um, well, that's what they say without the back and forth emails. And that's really what you're looking for. Now, please excuse me. I'm going to be rude. I'm going to be looking over this way at my big screen. So it's a lot easier to read than this little screen down here. So if you see me looking off into the ether, I'm still paying attention. I'll occasionally look back here so you can see me referring back to you. Now, to look at the basic features, we won't watch the video or anything like that. But it's basically, you create rules around the kind of stuff you want to do with Calendly. So you can you know, let it know your availability. And it then only books into that availability. You've got links and embedded code that you can then insert into your website. You can, people then pick a time and the event then gets added into your calendar. It's got lots of integrations with different things. So you can buffer times. It works with um, Office 365, Outlook, Google, iCloud, Calendar. So you don't have those double books. And also if there's two people booking at the same time, the first one to click on the book one is the one who reserves that. So it completes it, reserves that time. It doesn't then double book you with two people at the same time. It's pretty good. Um, Calendly also supports what we call one-on-one -on -one meetings or you've got round robin meetings. So for instance, it may then point you towards something say as um, first meeting goes to this person's availability. The next one goes to this person. The third one goes to this person. So that then it's not all necessarily having to go to one individual. It may be, you know, one, the first book goes to John, the second um, goes to Sylvia, the third goes to um, Kerry. And that's how it would work. Like doing a in order and then back again and in order so that everybody gets that kind of, um, that, that, that shared availability of things like consultations, particularly if you're in a practice um, or even a doctor's surgery for that matter, where you've got um, to spread things out nice and evenly between all your doctors or your medical practitioners or your consultants. Um, time zones always show up really well with this particular system. It's one of the things I like is that when it comes up with a calendar in that person's um, browser, it shows them their local time. So they pick 3 p.m say in Darwin time, well, that's actually 3.30 p.m. for them in Queensland, or it'll be 1.30 p.m. in Western Australian time. So it automatically does that conversion, but it still comes back to you as being 3 p.m. your time, regardless of where they are. So it's always at the same time. It plugs into a lot of things like GoToMeeting, Salesforce. It has integrations with Zoom as well. So it'll place that Zoom meeting request into your, um, into your Zoom account as well. So if you've got one of those, a free one even, it will do that. Um, it then works in so that it reserves that time in Zoom. So you've got a link that goes back to that person and says, here's the Zoom time um, and the Zoom link to click on in that reminder as well. Much the same as you've done with the ASBAS digital solution system, which is a little bit more complicated. As you know, signing up to that was probably not the easiest process you've gone through in your life, but it does allow you to do that similar thing. It'll send back that email into your reminder that goes into your calendar and it already contains the link to the Zoom call. Or if you're using something else like Google Meet, uh, it works with that as well. Or Microsoft Teams, it'll also integrate with that as well as things like Skype. So depending on what your video conferencing is that you're using, it will work with that as well. So what I'm going to do is log into my account so you can get sort of an idea of the kind of things I've got in here. So I've got all these different kinds of calendars that I have. So I've got what, 3, 6, 9, 11, um, 10, sorry, 10 different, um, 10 different uh, calendar options I've got. So the first one is for um, a certain availability I've made for ASBAS Digital Solutions um, availability for the Broom Chamber of Commerce and Industry because I visited them last week and now I'm taking follow-up um, initial free one-to-one -one calls with their members over this next month. Then we've got, you know, my stakeholder catch-ups that I have with another program. This one's probably the most um, common one I get is the availability for booking my scoping calls. If I wanted to look like what this looks like in a booking page, it looks like this. So it'd be like, okay, when's the next available time for a 15 minute call? This goes to show you how busy I am this week. I can't take a 15 minute call until next Tuesday at 3 p.m. 
in my time. So depending on where you are, that will show up in Western Australia as 1.30 p.m. In, in um, Queensland, it's show up as 3.30 p.m. So it's very, very, you know, it, it, it's very being, being very strict with the availabilities I have. I don't have a lot of time for phone calls until then next week. And like I've made some areas in my calendar personally that I've blocked out so I can take reactive things when they come up. But for pre-booked things, this is kind of how booked up, booked up I am. I've got, you know, a lot of stuff until the end of the month where suddenly my availability opens right up again. And once someone chooses that, so let's say they choose 8.30 a.m. on the 20th, Monday the 26th. Then they look for this. I should um, turn that off because that's a public holiday in Darwin. I know it's not everywhere, but in the Northern Territory it is. And if we look at this and go fill in the name, fill in your email, choose how you'd like to meet. So this is really important. So in these consultations, they may choose a phone call and then they can also enter in any notes that they want to have on their way to um, you know, booking me that they might want to prompt me and say, hey, I want to talk about social media. Hey, I want to talk about SEO. And then they can have a text message reminder sent to a number as well, which is not just an email reminder, which they will get. It also gives them a text reminder. Although importantly too, if they want to add in a second person to that or a third or 10 different people onto that call with me as well, they can add in their emails as well. And all these details of the Zoom call or the Teams call or the Google Meet call or the phone call will go through to their calendars as well. So it's going to work out pretty good. So what it is, they put their phone number in here and then I'll know who to call at the appointed time. So it's a really, really clever little system that makes it nice and neat and tidy and really simple for the client to use in there. Good question here is if it's a pest control business, could the user put their address? Absolutely. In fact, what I all in, in some cases I'll do if I'm going to visit someone, I'll get out of this particular calendar because this one's not really that appropriate. But if it's say a ASBAS um, in-person consultation, so this one here, I can actually set in these, in these different, so if we look at the live page, it looks like this. And I'll pick out the next available in person. I've got it on the 20th at 4 p.m. Then I can say, okay, do they want to meet at a specific place that I've set? Um, I also then have sometimes options where I put in, put in your address where you want to go. So I would do that within my calendar. I'd say, what are the, how can people book that? So I've got what the event is. Then I can say, add a location option that says the location is ask the invitee. And then they can set the, the option that they want to have. So if I edit that, I can say, ask invitee, what that means is they'll put any response in there. So I can make that their address. I can also set up additional, um, additional, uh, um, oh, what am I looking for? additional fields, which will allow me to do that. So instead of just these basic fields in here, I'll take that one out. So I don't want to actually have that option. Um, I can then add in here, for instance, the invitee questions. So remember it showed up as these things. So we can say ask invitee and then I can add in another field down the bottom, which says asking you a question. And that question can be, what is the address um, of the service required? Or something like that. Whatever the question is you want to ask, put it as required and then have multiple lines and then they can put in their address. Or you can just say address and I'll just apply it in there save and close this one. So I'll get this out before someone actually sees it. Oops, Becky. Okay, so they make the booking, 4 p.m., confirm. And then they have name, email, phone number, the name of their business, all these other questions. Then there might be an address thing in there as well. So they can enter their address and then come through to you as a place where they will be able to book. So yeah, lots of different places. So in this particular case, what I do is I, I have preset a couple of places where I meet people. Funnily enough, this is one I do need to change. So I'm actually going to um, take away one of those cafes and replace with another because um, one of them has changed their closing opening hours. So this is an example of how I would change these kind of settings. So how they can book the event, sorry, the, the what event it is. I'm going to take the Mad Snake out. And I'm going to uh, then add in a new one, which is called Sapphire, in-person meeting at Sapphire. Um, bar and grill, Darwin City. These are all places because I live in uh, Darwin City, so I'm able to get to those really easily. And then I can add the address of it. So I look them up in Google, bar and grill, Darwin. So that's the one at Berrimer. That's not the one I want. I want the CBD one. 
So we can go here, it's Sapphire Bar and Grill, CBD Bar and Grill, 4850 Pass Pilot Center Point, Smith Street, the mall. So I'll just add that detail now into my here. Um, underneath the Darwin Innovation Hub. So I can give them an address and details. And what I will also want to do there, rather than putting that in there, I might want to put a link in to where that location actually is. So I'm going to look for Sapphire Bar Grill at CBD. Hopefully it'll come up. That's just the Barrymore one again. I want to add in what their address is. So I go shop, um, where was it? Uh, 48 to 50 Pass Palace Center Point Smith Street Mall. Put that into Google Maps. And then I can get myself a link from Google Maps to include in there. So then they'll easily be able to find that. So I'm looking for that particular address. There you go, it finds it. It says, yep, here is the address you're looking for, Pass Palace. It's um, Mad Saint, uh, the uh, Sapphire's right there. So where I'm pointing to in that photo. So I'm gonna do is share. It's gonna give me this link. And then I can put that in there as well to say, um, Google Maps location. So then they can hit that, that particular link and that will show them the address location. So in it goes. And now I've saved that and that's now become one of the options in my Calendly address. Now, if I wanna go and set up something from scratch, a brand new uh, calendar setup, then what I wanna do is then create an event type or something like a one-off meeting. So the one-off meeting allows me to go create a meeting type that I then wanna to create to give a link to um, in a particular email to a particular person. But mostly what you want to be doing is looking at setting up times for recurring events that happen at different times. I can then choose now the basic um, the basic level of Calendly is free. Um, it's when you want to add in things like payments, so prepayments that go through this system as well, and things like SMS reminders. That's when it becomes a paid thing. That said, though, the payment is really kind of like ten bucks a month US um, to run all those expanded details like you know um, sms responses and all that so that's to me is one of those things where you want to go yeah you want to do um something that has all those bells and whistles where it's got payments available and it's got the ability to be able to um, add in sms reminders then that's worth paying for i pay for that myself because simply because those sms reminders are gold because that's it's a lot more powerful people will be reminded much more Better, much better by an SMS than by an email, which in some cases may not even get through to them. So in the free, in this particular version, I've got access to one-on-one -on -one and group um, in this particular version I've got. Um, I don't really want collective or round robin as well. That's an extra um, load up as well. So if you're running, um, you know, a bunch of different tutors, round robin is an option you have to get to the next level up. So the level I'm on currently is not billing. Go back to the main page, Calendly. So the different pricing for these ones are, there we go. So I'm paying, sorry, $8 US a month is what I'm paying for now, or 12 US per month for a lot of those different um, ideas. So adding things like the round robin and all those. So there's lots of different things. Sometimes I'll even go into um, certain things like HubSpot and Salesforce if you're using those as customer relationship management systems. Um, and there's also lots of support. They're very, very, very good support. This is probably the best of the best out there in terms of the system and the integrations it's got. So it's um, one which, because it's free for you to use just to do email reminders and for one-on-one -on -one and group um, invites, then this one might be really good for you. So in this case, I just want to book a one-on-one. -on -one. So I can go, here's my one-on-one. -on -one. The event name is, um, I'm going to say 30 minute consultation. And then I can add a location. If I say, well, it's not location, I just want this to be a phone call. So we say, do I want to call them or do they want them to call me? So I'll make it that I call them. And I can offer another location option, such as a Google Meet web conference or a Teams web conference. I don't have that booked into my Teams, so it doesn't set that up automatically. I would have to then do that only because the government program on one doesn't let me connect anything. So it's a really annoying thing. But Zoom does. And so does Google Meet as options for doing video calls. And then I can offer in something like an in-person meeting at a set place. So I can call that place, um, you know, the Click Starter Office. Darwin City. 
Oh, come on. Got those terrible typing blues again today. And then I can tell them where that office is. 39 Kavanaugh Street. Darwin NT. Oh, 800. And then I can do again that link, link through to a place. So I go um, 6639 Kavanaugh Street, Darwin City. So I just live down the road from the um, other place. So in, that's really not where my, that's the picture of my building there. And then I can add that shared map link right there and then include that in the details as well. So we go um, Google Maps and then they can tap on that and that will give them the place to go to. Then I can put in instructions or, or you know, like something like select the time or the select the, um, the, the, the contact method you prefer and then can set up what I want my URL to look like. So what I want the address to look like. So at the moment, that's if I send them off to an actual address, but there's other options, which I'll show you in a moment. So now I'm saying, how long do I want to make this? It's, uh, I can make this so that they can book up to 60 days in advance. I only want maybe 30 days in advance because I don't know what my life is like in 60 days time. Or I can set a particular date range or make it indefinitely into the future. Set the duration of that event. Or I can set a custom length. So for instance, if it's 20 minutes, it's 20 minutes. But I'll set mine for now to half an hour. I can use a schedule that I've already set up. So for instance, if I've got a schedule that works with me, um, which is nine to five on those days, um, or I can use a schedule that I want to set as custom hours. So I can say, for instance, I'm also open Saturday at that time and Sunday at that time with my time zone listed. So I can look at it like this or I can look at it like that. But mostly you look at that like a list because it makes a certain sense. You can then add an override for certain dates. So for instance, I could say, I'm not going to be available on the 25th. That's going to be not at all, unavailable on the 25th. So it already says on the 25th, I'm unavailable. And then let's just say that on you know Christmas day as well and New Year's day. So Christmas day on the 25th, I'm going to make that unavailable. So I can set certain public holidays ahead of time that are unavailable, even if I'm making myself available seven days a week. And this one you're gonna love, it allows you to set a buffer between your events. So it says, it's gonna put a buffer between not only the events that people book through here, but in, in consultation with what's already in your calendar. So if someone's already got you booked in for 10 a.m., then it's not gonna let someone book, let's just say for 30 minutes either side of that. So they can't book in at 9.30, they can't book in at 10.30. They won't be able to book in until after 10.30 when that, so it'd be about, if you've got a, a 10 o'clock um, booking already in place, they won't be able to book until 11 or booking at much earlier. So not nine, they'll be able to book at nine, not 9.30 because it's leaving a 30 minute buffer between them. Then you can add additional rules to availability. You can make your start times on the top of the hour, every hour or every five, 10, 15 minutes, if you like or you just make it so that's only every 60 minutes that you can take a booking and you only want any, no more than two of those bookings per day. So it can't start, oh, sorry, this is this is the start time. So I don't like to take um, appointments any, any closer than 24 hours before. I close my calendar off 24 hours before, and then I only allow, say for instance, two or three of those particular kinds of appointments in any one day. And then we can just automatically show the time zone in their local time. So that what they're booking is in their calendar in their local time, which then matches with your local time. And then I always just about make this a secret event because I don't want this shared on my overall calendar page. So if someone goes to say calendly.com dot uh, forward slash Dante St. James, calendly.com forward slash Dante St. James, this one here. This shows all the calendars that I've made public that people can just go in and book in for those. Now, some of those I've actually got to hide for now, but one that I do want to have in there is my 15 minute scoping call. All the others I can get rid of. So you're getting an idea now of just how you know granular and powerful this particular project, this particular product is. Then you can look at then the additional stuff you want to add in there, the, di the different ways that people can meet with you, different questions you want to add in there as well, such as address. 
like we got before for that pest control business. So I want to say, okay, we want a multiple line and it's required, add it in there. And if we want it to look higher, we just grab this and drag it up to the position where we want it. So the compulsory stuff that has to be there will show first, and then your custom questions will show after that. So I close that one and then I'll move on to, okay, what are the workflows? Now, this is where we add in things like email reminders and text notifications. So I can create a workflow out of this. Well, let's add a workflow. The workflow may be to create, no, nope, not that one, a new workflow. I want to send an email reminder 24 hours before the event start. And then I can set what that email looks and feels like. So I can include the cancel and reschedule links if they need to do that. And then put the basics in there of what it is that's going to read in there. I can't add in necessarily photos and, and pictures and all that. So it won't be that pretty, but it'll be a very plain email that has all the information in there that I want to set for them. So I want to do that. And then I want to, apart from sending an email to the host, then I also want to select say, something else. So maybe a text to the invitee or to the host. So I can send one to me or I can send a text to the invitee. Now, text messages are a paid part of this. So you add those on there, at least the $8 a month version um, upwards. So I can say, I want to send a text to the invitee. So I want to go, okay, a reminder. And a reminder just comes in that format in a text message. So once I've added all that in, it's going to take this one out. And then we go, okay, the reminder 24 hours behind when it happens, I go cancel that because I don't really need it. Come on, off we go. And I can add all these different things. So I can email feedback surveys. I can set up requesting for follow-up meetings if that's something I want to do. A thank you email can go out a day or two after that, which would really be helpful for the pest control business to send out your thank you email. And then also for requesting follow-up bookings, that can be really good for you if you've done a visit with that client and a week later, you wanna request their follow-up booking for the next six monthly check. So lots of different little automated things you can do. You can send text reminders, you can send confirmations, you can send cancellation notifications through to text or by email as well. So you've got lots of different options that allow you to add little automated things that are gonna make life a little easier than you having to go and follow all these emails and text messages on your own, using your fat thumbs on a mobile phone, trying to tit, 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 to get someone in. Now I've got um, set workflows that I've applied to all the different kinds of things I'm doing. So all these different things have got the same workflow. It happens 24 hours, it sends an email and a text to the invitee to remind them 24 hours out that they have that particular um, thing happening. I can edit that and then add on to more of my new ones. So I can go, there's the 10 selected. I can then select everything else. So it's now got 12 things that are selected that all have that reminder thing to it. So I can do one thing that I like to do for all of my workflows and then apply that to every single calendar I've got in there or not. So it gives you an idea now of the different things I've added my workflows. I can set things like um, how the calendar invitations look. So in this, I've got, for instance, nothing special in there, but I can add extra things on there, such as remember to bring your device or remember to make sure your pets are not inside the house uh, for half an hour after. So you're putting information in there. You can have email reminders, email follow-ups, text reminders, all those different things are handled through those workflows that we saw before. Then I can set what is a confirmation page. So I can display a confirmation page within Calendly itself, which confirms what they're going through, or I can refer to a, a page on my website, for instance. That might be handy for you if you're using Facebook ads that you want to have the, um, like a, a thank you page on your website that's hidden to everything else but this process. So when people land there, the Facebook pixel will pick up that you did this and then report back to Facebook that this was a conversion and successful according to the ad that it came from. So that could be a really good way of you tracking the success of things like Facebook ads. And then finally, you can collect payments using things like PayPal or Stripe to collect a certain payment for that. So in the case of Stripe, you change that to Australian dollars and make it, it's going to be a $120 consultation. And the payment terms are upfront payments only, um, refunds only, 
um, within um, seven days, uh, refunds not available within 24 hours of cancellation. Not available for cancellations within 24 hours of the appointed time. So you can put in what your payment terms, your return policies, all that sort of stuff is in there. So I've already set up Stripe and PayPal as my systems that I'm working with. I'm not gonna add this one in here, but it does allow it. Oh, let's add it in for example, we'll be able to see it. Well, it's gonna run out of time shortly to see the other two systems. So I pick up this one on the 28th at 11 a.m., confirm it. It allows me to put all these things in and then I can then put the payment in through Stripe and that will go to my bank account. So setting up Stripe, you need to do separately. It's not done through here. You will need to set that one up, but that allows you to then have the payment all in the same thing. So you're not having to go chase payment. It's already being done and it won't let them schedule that event until they've confirmed that payment. So they've got to make sure that you know, you're getting that payment first before you accept that appointment. So that's Calendly in its most basic form that I can tell you about. There's another one called Timely here. And in Timely, let's look at the free trial. We send free trial. We can say what kind of messages we are now. You're getting a very, very good sign here of the kind of businesses that they like to serve. So they're very good with things like um, a lot of uh, personal services. So um, personal trainers hair, beauty, studios, salons, that kind of thing. Or you can be a general service as well, like tutoring and consulting or whatever you want to do. So if I go tutoring and consulting in my, car, my part, I can say I've got extra staff. What this is doing is trying to figure out how much it's going to cost you to use this system. These guys do not have a free version. It is all paid. So I can go I've got two to seven staff, put in my details and I'll get going. So I'm just going to go, you know, click starter. Uh, phone is 0420. My name is do my email address and then put in a password. I agree. Let's start my trial. It's going to send me a verification email, but it will allow me to go straight into what my calendar looks like. And we can then start to set up what our rules are. So for instance, I can do things like creating my first appointment by putting it in, sending a consult form or running through any of these processes here. So let's try creating a first appointment. It will take me into the calendar where I can then create my first one in a certain time. So let's just say it's on Monday the 12th, set it up at 10 a.m. and I can then make add an appointment to it and then add in the appointment details of that particular person. So that all the details of that customer, say for instance, they've called my salon and I wanna say, okay, what's your details, your phone number? Okay, email address, great, we'll send you a reminder, no worries at all. So then we can add that. We can also set recurring appointments, really important for people who are running coaching services. If you're setting this up and you say, I wanna repeat this every month, repeat it after one month, a number of times they've bought a six month package. So I'm going to repeat it five times or end it on a certain date. So a total of five, let's make it six. So the total of six appointments over six months, repeating monthly. So if I want to do that, that's great. Address, then I can put in the address of them. So for instance, if it's something where you need to go there or we go, okay, the appointment's taking place somewhere else. I can add that in as well. So this is just letting them know and you know where this address is taking place. And then this is what a really interesting part is. It then has booking notes. What happens in here is that this is more than just a system for taking bookings. It's a complete system for handling stuff like customer notes. So in these customer notes, we'll go into this customers tab at the top. And in the customers tab, you'll then have your customers that you can bring up when you put in a booking or they put on an online booking excuse me, that will also then put in a note into their existing customer record. So you've got then a record of all your customers in this system so that you can then go and see who they are. Now, I haven't got any customers to import in here. I haven't, I don't, I no longer use this system. I used to use it quite a while ago, but it's really, really, really cool to be able to then have a record of your customers. So you can go in at any time 
look through this list of customers who are in that system and see what they last had done or who they last had that done with. So you can see how this would be important with something like a hair salon or a massage salon or something like that. But just as good for people who are using something like um, consulting, they will have those consulting records in here and then have a record of everything they've done with that customer as well. So it's actually a really good system for running that. You can then run reports on how things are performed. You can send and receive SMS messages. So you've got to pay a bit more for that. Like I said, there's no free option for this one, but then also handles your email marketing. So you can send out your newsletters from Timely as well, replacing something like MailChimp or MailerLite or whatever you're using. Then you can do things like creating invoices and viewing invoices you got creating your gift vouchers. So this is way beyond just a booking system. This is almost like a salon management system that can be used very effectively for people who are running anything that has times that are allocated to particular clients. So you can go through and then do that setups with um, doing things like setting up your booking buttons, mini websites that will then show someone all your services that can be booked. So linking through to your social media and making sure you've got, you know, widgets that you can use to embed your stuff into certain places. So you can have a booking widget that sits on your website, making it, you know, uh, 800 wide by 600. And it shows you then I'm going to do private tuition, private tuition, small business consultation as those different kind of options that people can then start to select as services. And so it gives me an idea of what this is basically going to look like. So then I can see if I look, um, you know, I want to just make it this location, just me. So they're only booking me or they can select all the staff that I've connected through to it for particular kinds of services. So I'm going to only make this the private tuition and it refreshes. And this is now what the website's widget's going to look like. So I can look at, okay, I'm looking at 13th. What's the available times? Now I haven't synced this up to my calendar yet, but it does sync up to your calendar as well. So then you pick those times and then continue to go on to then book all the details in. So just like Calendly does, this one has one. The big difference is this is paid and it will um, have you having to, I guess, book in um, you know, a lot of extra details such as your customer records will be in there as well. So to look at your um, the timing, uh, timely, let me see, get timely, the pricing for this. It starts at, oh, it used to be $29 a month. Let's see if it's still there. Uh, 25 a month now for solo, for the solo people. But if you've got staff, it's going to be $50 per month for two staff. And then it goes up after that. So if you look at, you know, two to seven staff, it'll then have packages that go up with adding more staff on. So $25 for the basic, you then build on 35, 45, and this is an Australian dollars. So there's no conversions there. They're actually a New Zealand company. Um, so they know how to work with, um, unlike most companies, they know how to work with currencies other than just, American dollars. So yeah, you can have a play with that if this is something that suits you. Just bear in mind, it's a lot more comprehensive than just a booking system. It actually is a customer management system as well, handles your email marketing, can handle your SMS marketing. You can even email or SMS your entire database with a marketing message um, if you want to from that system. So it's a lot more intense. But that said, it's going to be a lot more, um, a lot more flexible to do a lot more things that you want to be able to do. So as you add on more of those things and the things like, you know, the marketing side of it, it's going to add on extra things depending on the version you're going to look at. So for instance, you can't really do automated marketing until you get to the $45 a month level. That said, for a system that does this much stuff, this is going to be a customer relationship management system, a workflow management system. It's going to be a booking system and a marketing system. For $55 a month at the top, that is remarkably cheap for what it does. So I would be really strongly considering this one because this allows you to do a lot of stuff if you've got a lot of work coming through you. The final system I want to look, take a look at is this one called Novo Call. Now I picked this one up. Now an example, I'll show you a couple of examples. This is um, my DanteStJames.com website. It works in with Calendly. So I've, I've been able to color my Calendly calendar on here and it works the same way. I can book those times in. 
the same way as we saw before with Calendly. It looks really neat, tidy, and it has a pop-up with it. So it looks really good. It integrates really nicely into my systems. In this case, the book button goes to this page so people can look at it and then they can send book from this one. The same one, this is a 60 minute consultation they can book and then they can book and confirm those details as well. So that's what I use there. But this system on my Clickstarter website, which is my digital marketing agency, then has a different calendar. And this is one that I need because I've had so many cases of Americans who want to use my, my services in through here that I've had to make a qualifying question, which doesn't exist in Calendly. It exists in this one. Now, the good news about um, the Novo call time sync is that it's a once-off payment. You don't pay ever again. So it's a one-off payment, I think of $59. We'll be able to see that in a second. What it does though, I click the button, it goes to my Nova call and asks the first qualifying question, which is, are your business operating within Australia or New Zealand? So for you, for instance, if you've got a service area that only takes in Brisbane, if you say, are you within the Brisbane metropolitan area? Yes or no. If I go no, watch what this does. It redirects and goes off to my website with a, hey, sorry that we can't serve you message. It's just a little bit slow at the moment. There we go. So it's saying that we only operate in those areas, but we're currently expanding into these other places as well. So that's a very, very quick, short, sharp way of qualifying someone or disqualifying them in that case. But if I say yes, it then allows me to go into the full calendar and then I can start to book those times as well. So I can go, okay, what is the availability in my calendar that's been synced? Let's go for the 13th at 9 a.m book in the details and then confirm. And that sends off reminders and all that sort of stuff to me and to them and to everyone that needs to know about that. So let's log in to see what the back end is like with Novo Call. Now, the big thing is here, sorry, I'll look at the pricing first. Let's go back one. Um, the pricing first, which is, is in American dollars because you know we're all Americans around here apparently. Um, there's this in here, but there's actually a this is like a monthly thing, but we're not looking for this. We're not looking for a monthly thing. What we're looking for is what their new system is, which is this lifetime deal. So if you go to the address that I've provided in here um, and it goes to this and you can get a once off lifetime deal, which allows you to have all those system details in there, but you're paying once. So you don't have to pay a monthly subscription. If you're anything like me, where you're paying so close to $2,000 in subscription costs a month, it's a ridiculous thing I have to do, but I have to do it because that's part of my business. So I have to make money to spend money to make money. Um, this was a really nice little, little surprise to be able to get something which is just a once-off payment meant that I never have to pay for this ever again. So you can use that. You just have to go to this address, which I'll uh, flash up on my screen through, not through there, um, through the other one, stopping sharing, going onto my other screen going to this one you might want to take a screenshot of this if you can so calendly we've got um timely which is at gettimely.com and nova call which is through that one there so you just might need to um screenshot that or i can copy and paste that into the chat window so it's a little bit easier for you as well so go back to sharing the right screen again back to nova call there we go so I'll just copy and paste that link in for you. And so you can see it in the chat window in just a second. There you go. And the timely one is gettimely.com. Helps I spell it right. And Calendly is calendly.com. They're really easy ones to find. So make sure if you do go to get the Nova call one that you click get the lifetime deal rather than going through their pricing to look at that. So let's log in, take a quick look behind the curtains before we have to go. So I've logged it in for me. So I've got this one thing in here that's my scoping call, but I can create different ones in there as well, different kinds of meetings. So create the meeting as a time sync meeting. Yep. That's what I want. So I'm gonna call this one, one hour session. It's a one hour call. The location again, like Calendly, you can set it as a callback, Zoom, which I can put the integration in place for that or Hangouts. So I'm gonna go callback in this case. 
So that's now going to be time sync. I'm going to have a specific address that it creates for me. I don't really care about what that is. I can set myself up to be on weekdays between nine and five. That looks good. That's my time zone. I can make it a one hour session. Um, I can make it, they can be booked on the half hour or on the hour. I just want to make it on the top of the hour, not at every half hour. I can put a buffer time again of 30 minutes, such the same way that we did with Calendly. And I can say that I can schedule no more than 10 days ahead, or let's just say 30 days ahead. And I can put the number of bookings that are allowed for each time slot. So for instance, if it was a group booking, I would make sure if it's a group of 10 people, I can have up to 10 people in that group who book me all at that same time slot if that's a, a session for groups. It was only for one person, set it to one. And then I can set up my notifications. And my notifications in this case are just emails. So I'm happy with that. And then I can add the email address as a required field that people have to fill out. I can add then, then my phone number as a required field and then name as a required field as well. And then add any extra fields I want to. So in the case of our pest control people, you put in their address for the service and make that required as well. So that will become one of the questions that comes up. And then I can add some payment details in there as well. So I need to create it first. And then I can add in, you know, my Stripe account to be paid for or my PayPal account for it to be paid for. And now this will go through to the new page that's been created as part of this. So it looks very much like the other one we just did. Select the time, select this one, and then I can put in those details to confirm my meeting in the same way. Or I can have it embedded on my website, make it 800 wide by 600 deep, and then grab that code. And I can put that into the code on my website using whatever I'm using, whether it's Wix or Squarespace or um, WordPress or Joomla, whatever you use to build your website in, that can fit in there. Now, it does have some very, very basic things, such as showing you upcoming bookings that have been booked in your system. So it's say, okay, where are the upcoming bookings that I've got that are being booked at the moment in this one? There's none because that's not, I, I haven't been taking many bookings through this yet. But I can then look at how it's build, the settings I want to do and how to sync it with my availability calendar. So in that sort of thing, I look at, you know, what, you know, the colors I want to use, all that sort of stuff. And then in this area, I can then add in things like um, API keys and the, the syncing in with my calendar. And on the personal, there we go. That's my links for everything that's in there. So this is a really, really good broad overview of a bunch of these different systems you can look at. Um, Calendly is definitely one that I use a lot more than others. Um, but that said, it doesn't mean it's necessarily the best for what you may want to do. What you want to do is make sure there's a calendar that will sync online. Decide what the features are that it really must has for you. Decide what you really need and whether free or paid versions are fine for you. For a lot of us, it's just free systems because we don't have a lot of income coming through our small businesses right, right now. And then also choose a system you're actually going to use. So I'd like to thank you very much for um, being part of today. So I've got another webinar coming up in one hour, which is all about, um, what is it about today? Business plans. So if you're interested in that, there's another one coming up you can still book in for. Otherwise, connect with me through LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, any of those, and um, reach out to me via email if you'd like to as well. Again, thank you so much for being part of today. And I hope you have an incredible week. May the sun be shining in your life for the rest of the week.